I just read it the other day, but I don't even know what it means. Yeah, you're such a faker. <laughs> <laughs> so that guy's my friend from college back in the day. His name's Wolf. You're pretending you know what this word is, but really. I never pretended to know it. I'll bring Wolf back into the video after we've gotten some other stuff out of the way. Today, I'm gonna to talk about how I scrutinize the nuts and bolts of Wordle to build an undefeatable computer AI to beat it every time. But in order to get there, first we're gonna to have to dive into the exact details of how Wordle colors in the letters of your guess. Next, we'll talk about some simple strategies to improve your gameplay. Oh, you're totally right. I'll let him play the game a little bit, see if he's any good. Uh, I helped him out a little bit too. And then of course, the most exciting part is I wanna show you how I built a program to beat Wordle, and I'll also show you how well it works by running it lots and lots of times. Then finally, I'll explain how in my digging around, I kind of accidentally figured out how to predict the Wordle solution for any day in the future. There's a lot to explore, so let's jump right into it. So have you played this game before? I've never played it. Do you understand how the game works? No. Okay, so for Wolf and anyone else who doesn't know, every day, the secret word is updated to a new five-letter word that is the same for everyone playing the game. You have up to six turns to guess it. The game tells you which letters of your guessed word are correct, which are in the word but in the wrong place, and which are not in the word at all. That's it. Something about the simplicity of Wordle makes it incredibly fun to play and also devilishly addicting. I'm a human. I can understand how this coloring system works. But how does a computer do it? Well, the first thing is that if there's a letter in the right position in the word, it will always color that green. There's never a time when the letter is positioned correctly in the word, and it also appears somewhere else in the word, and so Wordle will decide to color that yellow because it's referencing the other letter. Green always beats out over yellow. What happens when there's cases of the same letter appearing more than once in a word? How does it color that situation? So let's call the word I try the guess word and the actual word, the truth word. Let's say those words are guess and truth. Well, the first thing Wordle is gonna do is it's gonna check all the letters in the same positions. First, G, is that the same as T? No. Is U the same as R? Is E the same as U? Is S the same as T? Is S the same as H? We didn't get any greens. Greens are the first to happen. Next, what Wordle does is it goes for yellows. So it checks, is G the same as T? We've already checked that one. No. Is G the same as R? Is G the same as U? Is G the same as T? Etc. None of those match. So it moves on to the next letter in the guess word, U. Is U the same as T? Is U the same as R? Is U the same as U? Aha! Yes, it is. That means the letter U in guess should be colored yellow. Now we're gonna do one other thing, and this is important. We're gonna cross out the U in the word truth because we've already used it. It's already been accounted for, and it continues like this. At the end of the process, anything not colored is just colored gray. We find that all the letters are gray except for U, which is colored yellow. Okay, let's do one other example just to make sure we have the hang of it. How about the words there and through? Now the T and the H are both green, and then the first E is yellow, so is the R, but the second E is gray. This is because the first E already got crossed out by the E in through. So what kind of strategies do we want to use for this game? For the first word, you want to pick words with lots of common letters to increase the chances of hitting something good. I personally like to use the word tears. The reason is T, A, R, E, and even S are all fairly common letters that can appear in the word. It's tempting to use green letters in future guesses. However, there's no reason to specifically seek out words that have the given letter in that position. In fact, you're better off looking for words that don't have that letter in that position because it'll help you narrow down the options even faster. Avoid placing a letter in the same spot. Oh, you're totally right. A green space should be used in future guesses as a wild card to try out other potential letters that will give you more information. Unless you're playing in hard mode where you have to use all hints in your future guesses. Okay. Now it's time to put me and Wolf against Wordle. Then we'll challenge my program to the same game to race man against machine. Another one is like rates. <laughs> um, well, that went pretty well. 
teach? What about teach? Okay, well, we got the A. I think it's got to end in E. Where's that E live? It could be at the beginning, maybe. It's got to be at the beginning. E late? Ooh, juicy. What's words that end in eight? In eight? No. I N A T. No, it doesn't like the I. Why can't I think of words that end in eight? Because eight is a number. Let's figure out the consonants. Okay, what other consonants? We haven't done any M's or N's. Mango? That's pretty good. A is the only one we know. I think that's a good one. Let's try it. Ooh. Okay, the G is really... It is almost like this one has to be a G, right? I think so. What what could we put here? A gate? Is that a word? Ah! A gate? Oh, agate is a, a rock. All right, we've seen how Wolf and I did. Let's see how the AI does. Okay, I'm going to start with my favorite word, tears. And then I'll type that into my algorithm. And then also put in the numbers associated with the colors of tears. There are my results. And it's suggesting delta as my next word. So I'll go ahead and put that in. And then I'll repeat. Tell it I use delta. And the outcome. And it's suggesting aroba next. So I'll do that. Outcome is green, gray, gray, gray yellow and it already knows that the answer must be agate and there you go ai four splendid dan and wolf six phew it feels good to make an ai that's better at something than you are okay let's dive into my solver details let's refer to the coloring of a small word small when the large word is large as the fingerprint left on large by small. So in the level I played with Wolf, the 30 remaining words all have the same coloring as our guess word, tears, because we have already eliminated the thousands of words that give tears the wrong fingerprint. So what happens once my algorithm tells us the next guess word of delta? Well, we play the same game. The fingerprint left on delta is gray, yellow, gray, green, yellow. That allows us to eliminate all remaining words that would leave a mismatched fingerprint on Delta. And when we examine those fingerprints, we see quite a variety of options. But only four of those words yield matching fingerprints. Abate, acute, agate, and ovate. Next, the algorithm suggests aroba, which is enough to guarantee that the solution word is agate. Can I ask you a strategy question? Yeah. There's, do we care about like getting the answer in as few guesses as possible? Or are we good just saying like, look, you got it in six, five guesses? Of That's a great question, Wolf. I decided to build a very conservative player by caring more about avoiding worst case scenario than solving it in as few turns as possible. This is called a mini max algorithm because it tries to minimize the maximum possible loss which in this case is the number of words remaining after the turn. At this point, it's clear we would like to diminish the feasible set of words as quickly as possible. But how to do this? So for example, the algorithm has just guessed dying and managed to reduce the number of suspects to three, gamma, laugh, and magma. To figure out the next guess word, the algorithm will try out a large number of candidate guess words. For this example, those candidates are snake, angry, and musty. Let's score each of these candidate guess words based on the worst case number of suspects after our guess. Let's start with snake. Oh, that was unfortunate. Snake wasn't able to narrow the suspects at all since all of the fingerprints are identical. So we put a three under snake. Next, let's revert snake and try angry. Okay, if the solution word were magma, the fingerprint would have a green in the middle space and we'd be able to distinguish it from the other two. But this is a lucky situation since gamma and laugh have the same fingerprint left on angry. So in the worst case, we can only narrow down the suspect to two. Finally, we do the same thing for musky. And as luck would have it, 
all of the fingerprints differ. So no matter what the solution word is, musty will allow us to win in our next turn. So we write a one under musty. Clearly, out of these three candidate guess words, we want to choose musty, since in the worst case, it reduces the number of candidates to the smallest value. So that is the heart of my Wordle solver algorithm right there. First, start with a good guess word. Then take a random sampling of many candidate guess words, say 100, and select the one with the lowest worst case number of suspects. As soon as the number of suspects is reduced down to one, make sure that that's your next guess. In the event that we ever get to the final guess before we manage to reduce the number of suspects to one, as a last ditch effort, we make sure we pick from the list of remaining suspects since any information we gain on this turn becomes useless. Okay, now it's time to see how well this AI does on historical words. I started with the first word cigar and just had my program play through the worlds day by day. And I was pleasantly surprised by how well it did. As I sat there watching it play, I saw win after win. And long story short, eventually I gave up. After 246 out of 246 consecutive winning games, I decided to call the algorithm a success and my own patience a failure. I was not able to get my algorithm to lose. So now that we've talked about my algorithm, I'll talk about some aspects of Wordle's internal algorithm a bit. In studying its coloring algorithm, I accidentally figured out that all of the solution words, past and future, are hard-coded into Wordle's JavaScript, so I can predict any of them on specific days in the future. It's actually just a big list of words. Wordle looks at that long list, and each day moves to the next word in the list. Wordle has 2,315 solution words that it cycles through. It'll take six years and four months for it to do that. In fact, on October 20th, 2027, Wordle will use up all the words in its dictionary. However, that won't mean that Wordle will stop working. Wordle is set up so that when it reaches the end of that list, it'll just continue right off at the beginning of the list, which is cigar. You can either describe the shenanigans I'm doing with the Wordle on April 3rd, 2028, or with the very next day. The choice is yours. This is especially fun because I can use it to play pranks on my friends by casually using the solution word on the day before it would show up or send them my genius one out of six play for any day. For example, on January 15th, the solution word was panic. And so I sent my friend this text. The next day he played the game and he got it in five tries. I mean, winning in five words isn't bad. The game describes it as great but it just doesn't quite measure up to me getting it in just one try. Uh, I should just say cheater, because that's probably way more likely than genius. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video and learned a few things. I certainly enjoyed thinking through the process and using problem solving to find game strategies. Thanks for watching, and remember, stay creative.